Yes, this is a fertile land, and we will thrive. We will rule over this land, and we shall call it this land. I think we should call it your grave. Ah, curse your son, but inevitable betrayal. What in the heck are you two squabbling about? I can't hear myself think. Ah, yes, that old debate. Well, I've had a few people pose the same question, so how about I shine some light on the situation and we'll see where we end up? Deal. Let's start with the new forge. We'll take it from there. This is the ship shop's new propane forge. They sell them on Amazon for about 150 bucks. They come in a kit, so you gotta do the refractory and the insulation yourselves. Put the pieces together, hook it up to a gas tank, ready to rock. Now when you buy this kit, it comes with a couple pieces of this refractory brick. That's mostly so you can set your material on there without having it roll around, and also keeps you from destroying that refractory on the bottom when you're pulling your material in and out. It has two burners and the gas lines have ball valves so I can turn one off if I don't need to use the entire depth of the forge. Now, although it's totally ready to rock once you get it connected to gas, I'm used to working on that thing. So when I built the stand in the last video, there were a few accessories I wanted to throw on here to make sure this would perform to the best of its abilities. As much as I like the pass-through option, if I'm ever working on really long material, nine times out of 10, I'm not. That's why I made the removable back door. It'll help us maintain the heat inside the forge without losing it out the back. It's the same reason I put the lift gate on the front. I can close the gate when I'm working on smaller material and it'll just help maintain really solid heat on the inside of the forge. As far as the design of the dead man, that was just for funsies. The whole purpose is just so when you're working with long material, it's not falling out of the front of your forge. Adjustable. The whole reason for the foot pedal lift gate is just so that when I'm working with big stock and both my hands are occupied, I can get the gate up out of the way, put my material in and drop it back down. It means I'm not losing a lot of heat and it keeps my hands clear of all that nonsense. Now, are we clear on the new forge, how it works, and what I did to make it perform a bit better? Good. Now let's talk function. Fire them up! As far as starting up the propane forge, it's super easy. I just turn the regulators on, I open up the first valve, get some gas flowing in. The forge is now running. Now after a couple of minutes, it's pretty much good to go. Just need to let it come up to heat. I can close the gates, easy peasy. As far as starting a coal forge, it takes a little bit more of a process. I always keep a little bit of tinder around. In this case, it's some cardboard and some small sticks. And then we get this fire lit. Now I can start introducing some of my fuel. In this case, I use coke, because it burns very clean and there's a lot less smoke. I've got a small little electric blower that pumps air in through the vent underneath the forge. And this little speed controller allows me to ramp up the air if I want to run a little bit hotter or nice and slow so I'm not burning through more fuel than I need. It takes a little bit more work to get it started, but once it's going, as long as I keep feeding it fuel and air, it'll pretty much burn as long as I let it. Quick note on fuel. Coal is inherently dirty, so when you see me with my grimy mitts, it's probably from the coal forge. Propane burns very clean. There are fumes, so I want to make sure I have the doors open when I'm working with it, but I don't really have to touch the fuel. It keeps my hands nice and clean for all that modeling I do. As far as fuel, air, heat adjustments on these propane forges, a lot of the kit ones come with these Venturi style burners where they pull oxygen in to mix with the gas and give you a higher heat. I can adjust up and down on these little gates to allow less or more oxygen depending on what I need. Now that I've got both the systems running, it's time to talk about performance. So let's get a little bit of stock in the forge and get it up to heat. I've got the propane forge running at about 3 PSI. It's nice and hot inside, but what color is the steel? The very healthy orange. And it's been about five minutes. I 
might need to leave it in there for any length of time, it's pretty much never going to get hotter than that. Which is good when you're working on multiple pieces, it means your steel is never going to burn. Now let's check on the coal forge because I put that piece in there a couple of minutes ago. So maybe a little bit hotter, but still just a healthy orange. I'm running the air on low so as to not burn the steel. I'm going to kick it up and see how long it takes before we start to get sparks, which is above forge welding heat, but it's going to show off how hot and how quick a coal forge works. I haven't changed anything over here as far as fuel as oxygen goes, but this has been soaking the entire time I was over at the coal forge. Getting kind of close to the yellow. Since I've already got this running full open on the oxygen intake, the only thing I can adjust is the gas. Let's see if we can get it a bit hotter. I've now got it running at 20 PSI as opposed to the 3 PSI it has been running. Let's give it a couple of minutes and see what happens. So what you saw a second ago when we were having our sparkle party was the steel actually burning because it was so hot. It was in the cold forge for about 30 seconds with the air turned to full blast and that's the kind of heat that I got. Now a topic that comes up constantly is whether or not a propane forge can achieve forge weld heat. Well, I've wanted you to see the coal forge so I can show you that it's capable of achieving temperatures hot enough to actually burn the material. The propane forge that I left running while I was working in the coal forge never burned the steel. That's great! That means I can leave a piece of material in there if I'm working on something else and I have no fear of ruining the piece. Now if I really pushed the propane system and shoved a bunch of fuel and somehow figured out how to add more oxygen, I might be able to achieve that elusive forge welding heat. I have a feeling it would be more of a bother to the forge overall. Might lose some of my refractory, might be a bit too hard on the steel shell because it's not super thick. So as far as this specific forge goes, I'm probably not going to need to push it any further than I just did. 20 PSI is a lot of fuel and plenty of heat for me to forge with. If I want to do forge welding, I'll stick to the cold forge. Just to reiterate, it is not impossible, but it is difficult for a propane forge, especially one this size, to achieve a forge welding heat. Most people don't even need it. If you want to weld something together, buy a welder. This is another user experience thing. I know that if I put this bar into the coal forge and cover it in coal, I'll still be able to grab the end of this bar and forge with it just fine. On the propane forge, since the heat needs to escape, it shoots straight out the front here and ends up overheating a lot of this bar. That means I either need to use tongs or quench this end just to keep it cool. There are ways to keep the piece slightly out of the door. It won't heat up so much. Really, I've had more problems burning myself on hot steel with one of these than I have a coal forge. Food for thought. Another point that comes to mind when working between these two systems is the kind of operating maintenance. When I get a propane forge running, if I want to adjust the fuel or the air intake, I can do so, but I really don't have to futz with it. As far as the coal forge, it constantly needs to be tended, whether or not I'm building the fire up, adding new fuel, what have you. The coal forge forces me to be more attentive and pay more attention to what I'm doing or what I'm working on, which I like. Since the propane forge is relatively easy to operate, I can pretty much just put steel in there, know that it's going to get hot in a couple of minutes, and then work on it. If I'm working on multiple pieces, I will probably be using the propane forge because I know I can set it and forget it. Let's say I want to move one of my heat sources. The coal forge is massive and probably more than what most users will ever need. That said, I can heat up huge pieces of steel in my coal forge, and I'm pretty limited on what size stock I can actually put in the propane forge. <sighs> the propane forge on its own is easy to lift and move and take wherever I want. Heck, I put wheels on the stand just so I could move it around the shop as I need it. As far as keeping the systems tuned and taken care of, the propane forge may run into some issues with the refractory crumbling out or things just kind of deteriorating over time. It happens. The coal forge is kind of indestructible. As long as I keep the pot cleaned out and I know my blower works, it should pretty much run forever, or at least longer than I'll be around. 
Another point that comes up pretty often is cost, especially when it comes to beginners or people that are looking to do it as a hobby. Propane forges can run the gamut depending on how many burners it has or how big the system is, how fancy it is. And there are high performance forges out there that are thousands of dollars. Coal forges, it's the exact same thing. You can find an old rivet forge, very small, probably won't cost you very much. It might be a bit beat up, but it's probably pretty cheap. A coal forge like mine is going to be more expensive because it's bigger it has a larger capacity. Think about it this way, what is your intent when it comes to forging? I started out on propane and made a ton of projects. I had a chance to get a coal forge and I fell in love with it. As far as the actual cost goes, it's just what do you want or more importantly, what do you need? End of the day, here's how I like to think about it. Propane forge is like driving an automatic transmission. Coal forge is like driving a manual transmission. It's a little bit harder to operate, but I have tons of control here. This is very easy for me to turn on, operate, and also just continue using. Now the car analogy kind of stops there because at the end of the day, I'm gonna drive them both. So that said, where do we end up on the debate? Exactly.